Welcome back to this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On this Monday's episode, I'm going to teach you step by step how to make an outdoor enclosure for your snake, for your lizard, whatever it is that you keep outside. Let's get started. Stick around. <laughs> The simplest way to make yourself an enclosure is out of two by fours and mesh. That's basically all you need. Two by fours mesh. I'm gonna put all the lengths right in front of me here on the screen of the two by fours that you need. You can make it out of two by threes if you want it, if it's a smaller enclosure. But what we've got here is we've got the frame already made, uh, and this is a two and a half by two foot tall by four feet long enclosure. So this is going to be the equivalent of well over a hundred gallons and it's going to be for a juvenile ball python that we're going to try to keep outside during the summer months, during the day, and if it gets, uh, if it stays above 80 degrees during the nighttime, we'll leave her out at night as well. We'll try to feed her in here. We'll have everything out here and she's going to spend her summer outside. So now you've got all your materials. The idea is cut all the wood. So the, the wood is all cut exactly the way that you need it and then you're just basically assembling pieces like it's an Ikea set, but much less frustrating, trust me on that. So once you have all your pieces together, then we're gonna have a box built like this. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna make it lengthwise. So you want uh, the longest part of your enclosure, so the four foot width or however long you make yours, that is how long the two by four should be. And that way the side width of your enclosure is actually going to be touching the ends of the 2x4. So it's going to look exactly like this and we're going to screw in the last few screws here and then we're going to be done with the frame. The easiest way in my opinion to do it is make the frame. So make the top and make the bottom frame and then you're going to put the 2x4s that are actually holding the thing up in after. So what I did is I made one frame so it's basically like imagine a small door frame is what you're making and then you screw the side pieces on to one end and then you have your other one made and then basically you're just resting one on top of the other and putting the screws in. So I'm just using two and a half inch deck screws and uh, a regular drill that has the wrong bit in it. So we're gonna fix that and then we're gonna stick the last few screws in and we're gonna go to town here. So the idea is make sure that it's flush, right? So this is the last little piece. So make sure that your frame is square and that way all the sides are touching. And what I do is I like to put in two into here and one into here. And that way it never moves. So two into the front and then I always drill in so that the inside of the, or the head of the screw is on the inside so you'll never see it so it looks prettier. Uh, you can stain it of course if you want, if you want it to look really pretty. And then one on the outside here. So for the next part, uh, this is basically what you would do for the entire frame. We're gonna make the lid of the enclosure or the top of the enclosure. All you're doing is you're making a box out of the wood and that's it. Uh, what I would suggest is making the longest portion full, like the full length. And then, because that's where your, your hinges are gonna go. So let's go ahead and drill this thing together and then we'll have a lid and just follow the same instructions for the entire body of the entire enclosure. What I would suggest now is bracing it. So use just little L brackets, I would suggest, I, I think these are three inch L brackets. The ones that have two holes for screws, that's what I would suggest for something this size. If you have a larger lid or a larger top to your enclosure, I would suggest maybe using a five or six inch, something with room for three screw holes, uh, and that way you brace it and it's not gonna break. So the next thing is put your hinges on the door. So what I would suggest is put your hinges on the lid or the door first. And that way when you put the screen all the way around, it's not actually attached because when you're flipping this thing up and down, if the screen door is attached, it's gonna be a pain in your butt. So put these on and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so now you've got your frame built and you've got your door built or your lid, whatever you wanna call it, you got your hinges on. So really all there is to do now is you've gotta make sure that you put your handles on so that you can lift the thing up. But before you do that, you gotta put the screening on. And what I suggest is depending on the animal, some animals you can get away with a one inch poultry net, which is very economically friendly. What I'm gonna use is a half inch galvanized hardware cloth. That's what they call it here in Canada anyway. Uh, we're gonna use this, I've got 20 feet of it. That should be all you need. Let's go ahead and get to work.
The next thing you have to do is cut around the edges. So you're going to take your knife or scissors or whatever you use and just cut all the way around the perimeter so that you don't have a bunch of blue or gray or whatever color your tarp is sticking outside of your enclosure. Also, I left a little bit of slack in the middle here because if your ground is a little bit concave or convex, you don't want the weight of this thing or the weight of the substrate inside to be a burden. You don't want it to start splitting the, the barrier, otherwise there's no point of having a barrier, so leave a little bit of slack when you put your staples in. So here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that you buy whatever it is that you're gonna use as the netting or the screen across uh, all the way around it on the top. I would suggest buying it in a longer interval than the entire perimeter of your enclosure. And the reason that I would do that is because then you can just do one fell swoop all the way around, or you don't have to cut it even one time and then you just cut it for the lid. But what I did is I bought two 10 foot sections and because it's four foot by four foot by two and a half, I'm gonna be just short of being able to do the entire thing. What we did that I forgot to mention at the beginning but I did put it in the list of materials that you'll need is if you have a 10 foot instead of a 25 foot roll of whatever it is that you're putting around it, I would suggest putting braces on opposite corners. And the reason I would suggest that is because 10 foot isn't gonna go all the way around, unless of course you have less than 10 foot of perimeter. So what you're gonna need to do is go from one corner to the, uh, the diagonal corner is what I'm trying to say, and then do the same thing on the other side. And we'll show you that a little bit more, but for now, let's open this baby up and let's get to work putting the actual screening around the cage. Something I wasn't considering is that uh, a lot of staplers are made of plastic and garbage. So a little bit of a wardrobe change. Let's chuck the old stapler and let's get back to work. So more or less, that's it. That's how you do it. You put everything together, you put the lid on, you put your wiring all the way around it, but on the inside, you can kind of make it your own. I put a little bit of a mix of sand and soil inside here, so it's a natural substrate, it holds the humidity very well. And then I've got one hide here, the other ones I built were too big. So we're gonna make some smaller ones and put those on the other side. And that's it. That's how you make an outdoor enclosure. Make sure it's in the right type of place. Make sure you monitor it for temperature several times a day before you put your animal out there. Of course, we've got a video right up here letting you know how to take care of an animal outside for the summer. And that's it. What do you think? Did I do a good job? Are you gonna make one of your own? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday. Oh my eyes.